The latest numbers in the race for Washington governor, our state, of course, a top two primary. So the two candidates with the most votes, regardless of party, advance to November. Democratic incumbent Governor Jay Inslee has 52 percent of the vote so far. Republic Washington Police Chief Lauren Culp is in second place right now with 17 percent. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Wright. I'm Joyce Taylor. King 5's Drew Mickelson starting our election coverage tonight live in Olympia. Drew. Well, Joyce, Governor Jay Inslee called those early results, quote, very gratifying. Why should he be elected to a rare third term this November? He said lots of reasons. He knows how to create jobs. He made the tough decisions needed when the COVID, COVID crisis started. And he also says he shares the values of most Washingtonians. We want to have better mental health care. We want to deal with the housing crisis. We want to have reasonable gun safety. We want to deal with clean air and clean water and fight climate change, and those are all things that we've been making progress on. So we've made tremendous progress in the last eight years. <laughs> the governor watched the results come in this morning from his home here at the executive mansion in Olympia. He did not attend a big rally, unlike one of his top opponents, Lauren Culp, who had an outdoor rally with hundreds of people. The governor called that, quote, more than disappointing in this time of COVID. Live in Olympia, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. All right, Drew, our King 5 exclusive poll of likely November voters shows Jay Inslee would likely beat Lauren Colt by 30 percent should they secure a spot on the ballot. Those odds did not stop Colt from holding an election night rally without social distancing or masks. King 5's Kayla Lafferty joining us live near Leavenworth. So, Kayla, you just spoke with Colt. What did he have to say about the results so far tonight? Well, we did just speak with Culp about an hour or so ago, and he said he's feeling really good about the results so far, saying there's still some more time left in the night. But I'm going to step right out of the way to show you what's going on here tonight. You can see they have live music. A lot of people gathered, and one of the big things people are talking about in terms of this rally is the fact that it does go against some of those COVID-19 restrictions. Playing where this rally is being held near Leavenworth is still in modified phase one of Governor Inslee's phased approach to reopening the state. That means you no know, gatherings larger than five people and face coverings are required. We did talk with several people who drove out to plane for this rally, one from Spokane, another from even as far as Clarkston, Washington. And they said they're here to support Colt, but also in protest of the governor's mandates. We spoke with Colt and I did ask him about it. Take a listen. A lot of people saying, you know, this is going against the governor's mandates on group size restrictions and stuff like that. So what's your response? Well, my response is that we are free Americans um, and it's a personal choice. If people want to wear a mask, they can wear a mask. Um, Article 1, Section 7 of the Washington State Constitution gives us the right. It says that no citizen shall be disturbed in their private affairs. And Culp said he, the turnout tonight is about 1,500 people. He said he feels great about that. And once again, he feels good about the results coming in so far. Live in plain, Kayla Lafferty, King 5 News. Kayla, thank you. So at 9 o'clock tonight, we talked with Republican Party Chair for the state of Washington, Caleb Heimlich. I asked him if he thought wearing a mask during the COVID-19 pandemic was a political or a public health statement. I think, unfortunately, Governor Inslee has made it a political issue. The way he has led since March, when he chose which businesses to open, which businesses to close, uh, labeling some workers essential, some workers non-essential, unfortunately, his failure to lead in a bipartisan fashion, he still hasn't called the legislature back into a special session. Many Democrats are saying we should be in a special session right now. But when Governor Inslee chooses to forge ahead by himself, that turns people off and that makes it a political issue. So unfortunately, his polarizing leadership has divided our state on this issue. So tonight, our Chris Daniels talked with the chair of the Democratic State Party chair about the early numbers. Take a look. Tina Podlodowski, the head of the Washington State Democrats, joins us now. And Tina, what's your initial reaction to these first numbers on this primary election night? Well, I think it's a good night for Democrats all across the state of Washington. We're pretty excited about the races that we're seeing. Obviously, uh, Governor Inslee is marching towards re-election, and we've got races up and down the ballot that look great for us. What do you think about uh, the Republican challengers uh, to Governor Inslee? It looks like Lauren Culp, the police chief of Republic Washington, uh, appears to be in the lead. 
Well, you know, Washington Washingtonians have given Donald Trump the lowest approval rating in a century, and they're not going to like Trump loving Lauren Culp any better. You know, Trump has opposed and insulted Governor Inslee and public health uh, officials saying, go ahead and don't wear masks. I won't comply. You can take your masks and you do you know what with it. So we think that Washington voters are going to do you know what with Lauren Culp in the November general election. Uh, what do you make of some of these other races? Secretary of State, there was a huge swing there with Gail Tarleton, the Seattle uh, elected official, the port of, former Port of Seattle commissioner, and Kim Wyman, one of the highest ranking Republicans to hold statewide office on the West Coast. Huge swing there, but it looks like it's close. What does that mean for Democrats in the fall? I think it's really great for Democrats in the fall in that particular race. It still continues to hold close. I know we've got some more um, votes definitely left to be counted if you think of all the folks that are in the door. You know, this primary um, is trending higher than certainly than the 2016 primary, and it will be higher than the 2018 primary. And you know what they say, when people vote, Democrats win. So we're going to turn out every vote that we can. How much of the disapproval rating uh, of the president in Washington state uh, factors into these numbers tonight. How will it factor into how you approach some of these races in the fall? Um, I think it will factor in greatly. I mean, all of these are Republicans who have said that they support Donald Trump. Um, and it's clear that they're not going to separate themselves from Donald Trump. So why should we try to? You know, Governor Inslee and Democrats have been doing all they can to keep people safe. And Trump, with the with the federal um, issues that have been placed on keeping people safe during this pandemic, not not being a part of these issues, that's going to be something that's going to come into play, and we'll still be here in November. Tina Podlodowski, the chair of the Washington State Democrats, thank you. So here is where the lieutenant governor's race is standing right now. Former U.S. Congressman Denny Hack is off to a healthy lead over Marco Elias and Ann Davison Statler. Nearly a dozen candidates lined up to take the seat of the current lieutenant governor, Cyrus Habib, who is leaving office to join the clergy.